Hello and welcome on this Monday afternoon. It's me, I'm back. It's been a while, hasn't it? I've been off on my jollies and I'm here with a cracking show today. Now, if anybody's new out there, let me first of all introduce myself. So my name's Simon Williamson and I'm here from Avagoic Designs to give you some inspiration with our lovely product. And uh, if you're your first time with us today, it's a great show to join us with us. We've got a brand new collection to go through in detail with you, which you're going to really love. And this is the Monster Graffiti range. So let's um, make sure everybody's logging on. Um, if you are on social media, give us a like and subscribe. Uh, we're on YouTube and Facebook. So whichever your prefer preference is, just go and join on one of those. Then you'll get the notifications every time that we have exciting news or more information about the Avago range. And then after the show, if you want to leave a comment, it just helps people decide what it's something they want to have a look at. So just get involved, ask questions. If you want to ask a question while we're live, just put QQQ at the front and I'll answer them as we go along. So let's see who's on then. Let's say hello to a few people. So I can see that um, Sue's on. So hi, Sue. Roxa Lee's on. Hi. I can see people joining us, which is really great. It has been a few weeks, hasn't it? I hope we haven't forgotten me yet. <laughs> Melanie. Hi, I'm Melanie. So some of these people might have already seen some of these monsters, so hopefully this um, will give you a little bit more in-depth look at these kind of products. So let's start by going through this range then. So you can see here, I've just found them out for you. This is the Monster Graffiti Collection, and this is the first time that Avogo has done paper pads. We've got a really, really genius stencil as well in this one, and we've got our characters. So if you go onto the website, you can see if you want to use the code SHOP24, It'll take it to all these products and it'll give you a little bit more time to browse through them and the prices and things like that are on there. But let me run through these with you while we've got you. So these are our main characters. If I hold this one up first of all. So these are the base of our little characters. So you can see we've got our six little mischievous monsters on there. And you can see that they've got really great expressions. Look at the faces and their eyes. And they just look so brilliant. I love this one here that's like flying. See him there, they got little, lots of different colours on that one, make him fly into your cars, hold your sentiments, your banners, whatever you want to do. And the best thing with these is they come with the dies as well that correspond. So you can see there at the back, nice big dies, easy to fussy cut out, great for children. Get them all prepped ready and then you can build your cars afterwards. That's our characters. And then for the characters, we needed some kind of background. So the background we've gone for is this kind of brilliant kind of like moon landing scene. Now, these planets are all separate as well, so you can actually build up your own backgrounds with these. So don't worry about it being, I mean, a bit restrictive. I've made sure they're separate, so you can do that. You can also extend this kind of base layer here, so you can make it wider. Um, you can also stamp it below and extend the actual depth of the background. So really versatile, this one as well. So that's your background. And then we've got here, this is our die, and this is our little monster. This is the 5x7 die set, and this is going to give you some really quirky kind of cards. It's a standalone product, and we will be demonstrating this on the second demo of how easy it is to make a card from it. But just to give you an idea, this is the kind of character that you can actually make from this. So you can chop into it, you can add its teeth, position its eyes where you want to. You can see we've got there, have a play around, and you can see how easy it is to make your own little monsters. So don't be like kind of restricted by just going with it, what's on the packet. You have a play around, make your own little friendly character. So that's our monster. And then stencils. You know that Avago always do a stencil as well. This is our lovely um, graffiti monster stencil. I'll just flick that forward a bit of it. A little bit retro, this one, isn't it? A little bit um, almost 60s, like the lava lamps. Really, really good how that kind of gives them um, a bit of a splat effect. Um, that inspired by my wallpaper. So if you've look, looked at my Facebook lives before, you'll get a gist of my wallpaper from that one. But I love that design. I think it's a bit really good one. Now, this is something new for us as well. So this is a stencil that we've done as well. And this is a speech bubble stencil. And the reason we did this is because quite often when you have a speech bubble stamp, it's going the wrong direction to the character that you want to use it with. So if we do it with a stencil, you can flick these over so they can point either way. And with the actual speech bubbles, you also get the stems, the actual sentiments in here. So you can see, if I just try and avoid the light for you, there you go. You've got really good sentiments on there. You have a monster birthday, monster birthday wishes, you're out of this world, party monster, I'm just a little monster, surprise, hooray, coolest kid ever. What a great sentiment that is for a birthday card. And beware, monster fun's coming your way. So that's your stencil and stamp set. And that's something new from us. That's brilliant. 
And then we've got these two here. So we've got our two paper pads. We've got our foundation set, which is this one. And this is just graduated kind of ombre effects in colours. Now, in a, both of these, you will get six designs, you get two of each. So that's the actual foundation pack. And then we've got the pattern one. So let me just let me go through these with you. I've got one here that's open. So the foundation pack. And these, you get two of each of these pages. Now, I've purposely chosen these colours to actually give you some vibrant kind of effects. So you can play around with these kind of ombre effects. Stamp your monsters on these. I mean, these, these um, die cuts I did earlier are just literally cut out of these papers. And you can see the vibrance that you get from there. This, like, pinky to orange one. And then you've got, this is like a three-way one. So you've got the blue, pink, and the yellow. Look at that. It's like watermelon, that one, isn't it? A really rich green going into, like, a little red at the bottom. And we've got a lovely pink and blue one. You get two of each of those in the foundation pack. And then in the pattern pack, we've got this one here. So this is the ones with the paper pad designs on. So these are a little bit more crazy. But look at these. They've got like a faux glitter effect in the background. So you can see it's glitteresque, but it isn't glitter. I want to make sure that you're clear on that one. But look how crazy that is and how vibrant that is. So you get two of that one. Two of this stripy one. It looks brilliant. Either way you want to use this, tear into it. I think um, Karen did a lovely card on the um, demos where she teared in and just did strips of this kind of one. So that's brilliant. Got this one, the little spots in there. And all these colours work well with the foundation pack as well. So we've made sure that they do kind of match each other. Look at that. It's got a kind of faux glitter kind of like check going through there. Oh, they're just amazing, aren't they? This one's a little bit more open so that you can get your characters to stand out. And obviously, like, use them sparingly as well. Cut your shapes out and things like that. But you can see. And what about this one? It's like little paint dribbles, isn't it, everywhere? Let's have a look at some of the comments. I can see that you're liking these. Nola says Fab Sentiments 2. Subi loves the papers. I'm so proud of these. I've always liked put paper pads. So it's nice to actually bring a paper pad to the Avago range. I think it actually builds to the collection lovely. Um, so someone likes the speech bubbles. Phil, Phil from um, Ireland, I think it is, loves this collection. I've had great fun over the weekend. Makes me smile. Well done. Oh, thank you. I've seen your mates as well on Facebook. So you've had fun with them. You saw, if you looked at my Facebook page, you saw one of the monsters escaped. So <laughs> you ended up on holiday with me for a few days. So that's the collection. So I think now we need to have a bit of fun with it. So let me just move this to one side and I'll show you some samples of what people have made already. So just to give you a gist how you can pull these together. So I'm just going to flip these through as we go. So this is one that I made, just showing you kind of the stenciled areas on there and breaking the actual ombre paper up. This one's a lovely one from uh, Paul. You can tell Paul's cars are really, really colourful, aren't they? And then this one's a lovely one from Karen. And all she's done is repeated um, all those kind of characters by masking them off. Notice there's all some papers. This one's just showing you that speech bubble. So I've just done it in a few different tones of ink and put surprise in there. Here's a really nice sample from Elaine. Look at that background paper. Just like how it pops out of there. It's ideal, isn't it? I love this next one from Karen, I tell you. You're out of this world. Look at that. And it's got a really nice kind of luster to it. So it's kind of like got some like spark links on there as well. So Bernadette says that I'm loving the pattern paper, Simon, so many ideas for grandchildren. That's what it's all about, though, isn't it? It's about having a go and getting the family involved. This one's another one from Paul. Look at him. And look at that, how, it, how good that looks. Just like a splodge of ink there, and then the stamp over it. You don't have to be accurate, but what a fantastic card that makes. It really has a lot of depth in there. And that could quite easily piece of, be a piece of card that you thought, oh, do you know what, but just put a blob of ink on there. I'm going to ruin it. I'm going to put it in bin. No, put your stamps on top and build on it. Here's one showing you that massive character. This one's from Karen as well. So is he, look, the little monsters are coming out of the mouth. Look, monster birthday wishes. We'll show you a few more. So this one's where they're actually bursting out the card. A really easy technique. And then let's find a few more from further down. Oh, this is a cute one. You're out of this world. Just two little characters on some of that paper. How easy is that? And that's just trimming around that stencil speech bubble as well. Ever seen fabulous makes? So fun and cool. That's what we want, isn't it? 
This one's from Sharon. Look at that colouring on that one. Look at that. And that she's just done a really nice background on the sky and then lifted it off. So I'll show you one more and then we'll get on with our demo. So here's one. This one has, I made. I put some wobbly eyes on this alien. So we've all got some wobbly eyes, haven't we, crafters? All got a bag of wobbly eyes and we're in cupboards. So get them out because these monsters look brilliant with these little wobbly eyes. I'll not shake it too much though because it'll, um, it upsets the camera. But look at them planets going around the edge, how good that background is. So I think it's about time we had his first demo now then. So let's get some crafting done. So let me just move these to one side. Put them over there. It's a great collection though, isn't it? It's really, really um, versatile. So I'm going to make this card today just to show you how we can pull together all those kind of elements that we've got in this kit. I'm also going to use one of the embossing folders for all that we've just launched as well. So if you want to find them, they're on the website as well. But it just breaks up that background a little bit more as well. So Bernie that says, they all look so good, fabulous card, guys. I think the DT team have done amazing with these, I've got to say. Really well done to everybody. And I think it's a fun collection as well, which is what we wanted. Right, so I've got my card blank first of all. So I forgot what size it is. Let me just measure it on the other I can tell you. So this is a 7x7 card blank. So nice big size as well. Let's pop that on there. I'm going to get these planets now off here. So I'm going to pop them down randomly all over this card. Just get some on and off the card so it breaks it up a little bit more. There you go, I'm loving that. So let's pick them up. Give them a good push down so they don't fall off. I'm using black ink pad. And I love doing this with backgrounds. I'm just going to move that up a little bit so you can see. So give that a good dusting of ink. And then that a good push down. And you could rearrange all these stamps if you wanted to, but what I tend to do is I know when I'm happy with what I've done, so now I revolve my card round. So I'm going to put it down here now. You can hover that over to see where it's going to be. If you're happy with that, that's where we're going to ink up again. Find it easier than keep relocating all the stamps. And because it's the background as well, we're just breaking up that whiteness. Give that a good push down. The Karen says, if you think you'll use them, Julie, but yes, yeah, so many. It's useful, so many people. Are. Oh, so somebody's like saying if they can use them. I think you all know it's a collection for you though. She instantly think I could make this. I'd like to do that with it. So I'm just going to fill in these areas now. So let's use this big one here. And we'll just scatter these other ones into these gaps. There you go. I'm not going to use the little ones anymore. So we'll just put them back on the carrier sheet. Pick those few up. And you could, if you wanted, you could go around this with a, like a Copic marker or a little bit of alcohol marker, whatever you've got in your stash, just to make them lift a little bit more off the page. But I really do like this black and white effect. A good push down. There we go. I'll take those off there. And look at that as for a background. Already we're getting a good base there. I'm not bothered about the centre, but I'm going to be covering that bit up. But just look at the depth it gives you already. I love them planets. I think if you've got other stamps as well, they'll work really well with that. So if you've got like a rocket, for instance, you could build on that. Right then, so the next stage I want to do is I just need to die cut some circles out. So we'll bring in two of my circular dies. 
quite big ones, these. I think we're the, about, the biggest one's about six inch, so it will go through um, this smaller machine. So let's get that one chopped out of black, first of all. Just get my plates. Oop. Take the right way up so I don't chop into the wrong side. That's the biggest of the two. And we'll just run that one through and that's going to give us like a base to make it pop our little scene that we're going to be doing. Still got no music on this, have I? <laughs> so that should give us our black kind of mat that we want in. We'll pop that just there a second. And then I've got the smaller circle, which I'm going to use a piece of that lovely paper pad, the foundation pack. And this is the ombre one that goes from like a purple to a blue and down to a yellow. So let's pop that on there. I'm going to go through the middle area just because I want to really get some definition of colour going through with this. Push that over a little bit. We'll just run this through. that to one side. There we go. So we've got, get that off there. I'll save that, but it's these scraps that are always usable, especially with these characters, we can stamp on them afterwards. So that's our kind of like little circle. We've got, you can see we've got an ombre going down there. I'm gonna add a bit of texture to this one though. So I'm gonna put it into my um, spot embossing folder, just to break it up a little bit more. I'll just get my Ooh. just got my little shim that I use when I do this and we'll just run that through just to break it up that background a little bit more just gives a bit more texture as well pop that over there Just going to switch those plates back around, as I will forget when I'm doing the die cutting later. Look at that. Just gives it a lovely kind of texture, actually, to base on there. So, love that. I really do. Okay, so now we need to get some scenery on the bottom for our characters to stand on. So, we're going to get that long stamp now. Is this lovely one here. Just going to bring in my stamping platform and a piece of white card. And you'll see, look at this. Right, we'll do it this way. I'll pop that at the bottom. Make that a little bit high so you can see. Pick that up. It's such a big stamp, this one. I'm, I'm finishing a project at home with this one, actually. I'm making a, a bag out of it, so you'd be really surprised how um, big you can use the imagery with it. So, give that a good push down. Get that detail all on that white card. Go in one more time. Here we go. And I'm just going to get my scissors now. And we're going to actually just free and cut around this top level here just so we can cut into this definition. So chop across the card to make it a bit easier to move. And then I'm just going to use the scissors. I like to use a little bit of a, a ghost edge on there just to give a little bit more depth. I do use big scissors as well. So you use the scissors that you prefer. I know some people prefer tinier ones. Here we go. I'll take that all there. And then we need our little character. So what I'll do is I'll get our character stamped 
and then we can do a bit of colouring together, can't we? Do it all together in one go. So which character shall we use? So we've got quite a few on these to show you, so you can see. I think we need one of the larger ones, and we'll put a little one with it, I think. So maybe let's have a look. Let's do this one with the open mouth. And then we'll do this one, actually. Let's get my piece of card up again. Put them on there. Look how big they are. They're a really great size, aren't they? Really make your card easy. Give that a good push down. And go in again just to make sure we get all those black areas as black as we can. Move that magnet a little bit further down. There we go. So that's our lovely characters. Move those out of the way. Let's get some colour on this project now. So I'm going to be using the um, Thirsty Brush watercolours that she's just brought out by Emma Blake. And the neon ones work really well. You can see on here, just bring those in, just to that side. Let's move these stamps out of the way. So I want a little bit of colour onto this like kind of landscape. I'm just going to brush some water on first of all, so it spreads a little bit easier. And let's go for some vibrant colours. So, uh, got blues and greens in there, so let's go for a bit of pink at the top. Just drag that down into those watery areas. I love these vibrant colours, I think they work really well. Make it a little bit darker. And then just pull that down so it's a little bit paler. And then let's add another colour at the base. So let's go for, let's go for this green actually. So strongest this at the bottom, add lots of water to it, and then we can just pull it up the card, and then we can add a little bit of detail going up here, so it kind of like, doesn't have such a harsh line. And because it's another planet as well, there's no rules on colours, is there? So you do what you want to do. So I'm just going to put a little bit more darker colours into these areas, just to break them up a little bit. There we go. We'll put that to one side just to be going off a little bit. And we've got our lovely characters. So let's give these some vibrancy. So let's have a look at this blue colour. I think this one's going to be blue this time. And they're so easy to like colour in as well. Let's just bring that blue in. I'm going to turn that around so it's a bit easier to actually get around with the brush. Around this little eyeball. And this other side. I'm going to bring a little bit more of that darker blue back in, so we have a, bit, a little bit more base. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of purple as well. I think it'll look really good with two colours going on. So let's bring a little bit of purple in. And just drag that down a little bit. I like how these colours all kind of blend as well. A little bit of purple on his foot down there as well, so it's a little bit not as patchy. Let's 
And I'm just going to just push that into the balloon. And then we've got our little character here. So let's get him in a really vibrant green color. I think all the DT um, team have had great fun with this collection, I've got to say. Uh, and when I got here today, there were loads more samples that I got to have a look through. I think they've done a cracking job. Uh, let's bring that green down to his legs. There we go. So I'll give this quick blast with a heat gun now, just to make sure they're dried off. There we go. Just gonna just make sure we've got those wet areas out of the way. Remember as well when you get these post your mates on Avago page, I really like to see what you make with them yourselves. So I'll just make sure we'll get rid of this little pools of water. There we go. We need to die cut our little figures out now, so let's get that done. Just bring in my plates. You can see on there, they all come with a corresponding kind of die, so we'll just get those taped over them. I love a die, I've got to say. Makes it a lot easier for creating your mates, doesn't it? And we've got this one. we just put that around them at the top. There we go. We'll just run that through. You can see on there that that's the whole range on the graffiti collection. So you've got the papers and the stencils. So go and have a browse on there if you want to have a little bit more in depth. Here we go. We've got our characters now. So just get these out of the way. And then we need to assemble our little card, don't we? So this scenery is going to go at the bottom of this panel. So you could try and cut it by hand, but you know what's an easy way is just flip this over where you want it, and then bring in one of your like your little brushes that you've got, and just use the excess ink on the back. It'll give you a really good cutting line, so you know where to cut with your scissors. I find that a lot easier than trying to hold everything in one hand. So we just chop round that. There we go. And then let's start to get this built up a little bit now. So we've got our main black layer, which we're going to put on the back. Some wet glue on there to hold it well. I can go in the center of our card. And put some more wet glue on this embossed panel. Put a little bit of tape running as well, so it's not. Which way we're going to go with this? I think we're going to go darker at the top. It's almost like a night sky coming together. And then we've got our lovely kind of lunar kind of scape at the bottom. Yep. Let's pop that there. And we've got our crazy little characters look to put on as well now. So let's get these onto the card. Let's have this one stood towards the bottom. The 
just going to make that pad a little bit shorter. Get this back in off. I think we're going to have him there running in over the hills. And then the last thing we've got is we've got our little sentiment to put on, which I've already got one made here. So I'm going to glue that onto there. You're out of this well, so that can go on with a little bit of glue. Not that there. Just give that a second to grab. Oh, I love it. Look at the little faces. Like it's chasing them into it over the little dunes at the back. And look at them planets in the background, how well that kind of creates that backdrop for you. So just showing you how well that collection comes together. So you've got like that kind of paper in there that we should just run through the embossing fold to give a little bit more of a texture. We've got that sentiment on there. And then we've got all those little characters. It's just so much fun, aren't they? And wobbly eyes, you could put wobbly eyes on there, don't you? Don't forget that. So I hope you've enjoyed that first demonstration. We're going to give you some inspiration now for the Avago collection, and I'll meet you back here in a couple of minutes with the next demonstration. See you in a second. And welcome back. So I uh, always oh, saw some lovely um, exploration there from the Avago range. It is really a playful collection and we do aim to literally let anybody with all abilities have a go with our products and that's what we're here for, to have a bit of fun and work together as a crafty family. So let's look at the second card then. So I'm going to show you how simple it is to make a standalone card using our little crazy monster. So this one here opens an actual card. So I want to show you how to make that concealed hinge. But you could also do it a second way. Like this one's been, and you have to forgive me, so I'm not sure who in the DT team's made this one. So this one stands up the same, but they've actually hinged it at the top. So you can see, they've cut out two, and made like a tent fold. So depending which way you want to do it, you can have it opening. I could do it the other way. I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so let's get started. I'll just turn that one back up, but you know what it is. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get out that really big die. And this is the outer one. And this is the one that's going to create your kind of like blank to base this kind of monster upon. So the first thing we need to do is a piece of blank card. We're going to just fold that in half. Make sure that's a nice deep crease. And then what you need to do is put that on your plates. Sorry, put it on your plates but overhang this die slightly. So can you see, I've left this kind of overhanging on one side. So that's where you would choose which way you want to open it. So I'm just going to do it this way around. It opens the correct way. I'm going to trap that. I'm going to run that through. So this is just a quick way of making an opening card. If you wanted to do it the other way, you just cut two of these on black card and glue them at the top so you've got like a tent fold. So Roxley says, what date are you on creating craft with the collection? I think it's the 19th of June, but I will post it on my page um, with the exact dates and times of the shows. As you can see there, we've got our little opening card and that's what we wanted. So because we've got this edge missing here, that's when you need to then cut out a secondary black one. So uh, we'll just put that through, and this is then going to give us the actual base for his card, so we can get our creative colours on there in a second. I don't think I've missed any other questions there. Put that through. It's 
that's our actual full cutout. So you can see, I'm going to glue that on there, and that's going to give us our complete shape. Let's have a bit of glue onto this bit. Just round that edge. I'm going to put a little bit of tape runner in the middle as well. Line that up at the top. And there you go. So I'm going to use a piece of the vibrant paper for the next bit. I thought I'd use this here. So this is kind of like that kind of splodgy design. So which way are we going to do it? I think we'll do it that way, actually. So I'll pop that big die on there. And it's going to give you kind of like the body of the character. I'm just going to look after all these little straps, but you can use them again. I just want to show you how fast this comes together. So it really does. Then run that through. It's great fun, this though, isn't it? But you could make like loads of these monsters, have them like concertina, so they like kind of spell out a birthday name for somebody or a message. So we'll just take that off. Get that off. You can see we're already starting to create our monster. So let's get that bit glued on next. So I'm just going to run some glue at the top. Just down the sides. I tend to not glue the hands, but then I, I've got the choice of make, moving them and making them hold something later. And look at all them cards and papers you've got at home. You could make some really crazy monsters. So get your pieces of card out that you, you didn't know what to do with and make these kind of crazy characters. Do that good push down. And then we need to cut out his teeth and his eyes and his horns. So piece of white card. And these come on these kind of like attachments. So you're not going to lose your dice. So his teeth are on one which is lower and upper things. And don't forget, you can cut into these after, which I'll show you. And then his eyes and his horns and his pupils are all on this second plate. So you haven't got any of those like little faffy kind of dies that you think, oh, where have I put his eyeballs? They're all kind of connected to make it easier for you. So we'll just bring that back over. We'll just run that through. It's really surprising how fast it comes together, though, this card, isn't it? go we've got those so we'll just pull out his little teeth and his ooh, just take those off there I've got my pokey tool let me just use my fingers a second put all those little bits there and then we can use them in a second and I just need one piece of black card And I'm going to cut out this larger circle here in the middle, just so I can let the eyes pop a little bit with the colours that I'm using. So I'm going to put that over the centre, trap that in there, and then we'll run this bit through. But look how fast this car's coming together. You could be having great fun with everybody making these. It's a make great bunting as well, one bit for a party. Think about that. String them together. So I'll just take those off. Right, so let's move these bits out of the way we don't need. And then let's just continue to make our friendly monster. So we've got his teeth. So we've got his upper deck and his lower deck. So you could just glue them in underneath there, or you could choose to let like, me use some of them. So I think I'm going to just chop into these a little bit and take the few of them off. And then we can push that under there. And we can hide them at that top bit there, look. And then the bottom ones. I'll do it the same, but the opposite way. So we'll just remove some off the edge. 
you have great fun with this though, you can just give it front teeth if you want to. So I'm just lifting that little bit up I've not glued down. Pushing that in. Want this little bit off angle, you see. There you go. And you can lift them up a little bit as well to give it a little bit more texture. There you go. And then we've got his horns. So these will go on nicely at the top. And it really is a case of just having fun. The horns can go wherever you want them to. The eyes can be positioned wherever you want to. Let's put this horn up here. And then I've cut out the black to make the eyes pop so you can decide. It was designed to go here, but these, to be honest with you, look like little ears if you leave them like that. So it's where you want them to go. So I'm going to go in the center with this one. And you don't just have to have two eyes as well. You can have as many or as little as you want. Let's put that one a little bit lower. Give him a crazy face. The Seuss's party invites would be good. Oh, that'd be a really good idea. Good idea, wouldn't it? You could even put a picture in the middle, couldn't you, of the child's party that you've been invited to? This last eye going on. Oh, it looks like me, that one, look. And then your sentiment, we just need to find a sentiment for him now. So we'll bring up the stamping platform again. We've got all them sentiments that we can choose from. We've got quite a lot on there. So I think let's go for surprise. I think that's a really good one to use on this one. Just get a little bit of white card. Pop that in there. Let's get my black ink pad again. That a good push down. Move that out of the way. I'm just going to trim around this. I'm not going to be even. I just want to make it a little bit abstract because it's a crazy little monster. I want him to hold this. I've tri trimmed around it like that. I just need to find a piece of black card. Here's a scrap here. This is perfect size for it. I really do like to use the scraps up so I don't waste anything. Maureen says she loves his wonky eyes and teeth. Are you about the monster? <laughs> and then we'll just pop that on there. And then all I'm going to do is just trim around this, give it a little bit of a black edge just to make it pop a little bit more. Around there, there you go, and down this last side. And then if I bring up a foam pad, just to raise it up a little bit, you can see we can put it under his hand like his old and little invitation for somebody. So there we go, surprise, and there you go. Look how fast that came together. And look how versatile he is as a monster as well. You're not just stuck with one variation. You could watercolour these backgrounds. You can chop into your old papers. You could put your own sentiments there. You could put a photo in its mouth. Um, I think there was a really great sample shared by um, Karen online where she put a uh, grandson in the actual um, mouth of the actual monster. It was brilliant. It's just such a great collection. You can see how much fun you can have with this. Love the planets. Uh, there's nothing I don't like about it, I've got to say. I'm really proud of this one. These little crazy characters are great fun, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy playing around with them as well. But Denise says, absolutely love it. Thank you, Denise. You can see lots of love arts and comments on there. Thank you very much. So that's um, today's Have A Go Studio. Hope you love this collection. It is available, like I say, on the website, so you can scan the QR code on the actual screen and put Shop24 on there. Easy to do and it'll take to all the products. Or if you go to the main site and you don't want to do it that way, just put Avago and it'll lead you to the same products as well. So don't worry. 
It's an easy way to shop. If you've got any questions, just drop me a message and I'll reply to you. But other than that, I'll see you in studio next week at the same time for more inspiration with this monster collection. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.